Rev up your engines. Adrian Gossop says, what do you think about removing the catalytic converter in order to boost the power of a turbocharged engine? Is it harmful to the engine? Well, realize that it's against the law to remove a catalytic converter in the United States. You're breaking federal law. But I mean, I talk to guys that live in Montana where they don't have any kind of inspection, and they do it. And the only thing that a catalytic converter does is it slows down pollution. It burns unburned hydrocarbons. If you remove it from a modern day car, all kinds of lights and stuff will come on. But it's going to hurt the car. It will actually run better because it'll breathe better, but it will pollute more. You're breaking the law. But the only thing, reason a car has a catalytic converter is to burn hydrocarbons. And if you remove it, of course, you remove that and then it just goes through the exhaust and there's less back pressure. And when you set them up right, they of course will run better. You know, race cars don't have catalytic converters on them. Cole Wild says, Scotty, my car has a check engine light. When I turn the key to accessory, when I start the engine, it goes away. What could it be? Should I be concerned? Thanks. Okay. No, cars are made that way. Here's how it works. If if you have a normal car and you turn your car to the accessory and don't start it, the tech engine light is supposed to stay on. That shows you that the bulb still works. Then when you start the car, the computer does a bunch of tests. If it finds a problem, it'll turn the light on and leave it on. If it doesn't, the light stays off. That's totally normal. Almost all cars sold in the United States are set up that way. As I tell people when they're looking for a used car, if you're looking at a used car, good idea to have a scan tool too. And like I showed you, get $24 scan tool, easy, cheap enough stuff. But if you don't have a scan tool, you turn the key to the accessory and that check engine light doesn't come on. Odds are they took the bulb out and then you definitely would want to scan it because even if they took the bulb out, the scan tool would still read a problem if there are any stored inside the computer. Edo A. Scotty just bought a used 2008 Mazda CX-9. What do you think about this SUV? Well, I would have never bought it. I had a customer that just bought one of those and then they brought it to me a week after they bought it. It was running like crap and I said, you're going to have to rebuild your engine. It's got a problem. It's going to be anywhere from $25 to $4,500. I am not a fan of those things, but you've already bought it. So change your oil a lot. And on that baby, I change it every four or 5,000 miles religiously because they do have engine problems as they age. If you don't have any engine problem and you change the oil every four or 5,000 miles, hey, it might be a decent car. You never know. But I've had customers have very bad experience buying those things secondhand. There's a lot of them, their VVT valve system, and it, they break down a lot. And then it costs thousands to repair them as they do break down. So if it does run good now, you're not having any problems, change the oil all the time. Well, and Edward says, Scotty, what do you think of a 2005 Pontiac? grand pre GXP with 202,000 miles a new tranny for six grand although it doesn't need spark wires the new ABS passenger side wire thoughts okay well if it really has a new transmission I would guarantee I would want the paperwork and I would call the place that supposedly did the work to see if it was really done and uh, six thousand dollars is more than I'd pay for a 14 year old Pontiac but if you like it and it runs good and that transmission really was new one put in or a remanufactured one installed in it ah, have some fun driving around just don't drag around in it because you'll burn that transmission out too the problem with that vehicle is the engine's stronger than the transmission if you want to drive it normal and use it as a toy car nothing wrong with that but don't think you can drive that car as an everyday driver and put 30,000 miles a year on it because it will fall apart in front of your eyes if you do that Armando Lopez says Scotty I'm 17 I'm getting a 2009 or 2010 G37 Infinity Coupe. Do you think it's reliable? I'm getting it from CarMax. Do you know about those cars? Okay. You're 17. You're getting a G37 Infinity Coupe. You're going to pay up the wazoo for insurance because that's a sports car. The problem with those cars are they're good cars. They're well-made cars, but as they age, they're expensive to repair. Nissan quality has gone down since the company Renault, the French company, bought them out, merged with them years ago. The quality isn't what it used to be. The problem with the G37 is it's a high-tech car they break when they break the parts cost a fortune I'll give you an example I had a customer with one the power steering hose went the only people that could get it was the dealer and it was like 350 bucks for a hose assembly where for say a Toyota I could get an aftermarket one 50 bucks at AutoZone that works fine but I couldn't get it for the infinity so realize that I wouldn't go that high end if I were you in 17 and getting a car unless you have a rich father who's gonna pay for everything to go right ahead <laughs>
Malad, Anki says, a Hyundai Elantra 2013 with 126,000 miles, good car to buy. There are problems with their engines too. Here's the thing, uh, Hyundai and Kia, they're kind of a merged company. Hyundai bought 33.8% uh, of Kia in 2013, so they're kind of like a merged company. And they ended up recalling 1.2 million of their 2.0 and 2.4 liter engines. If that car has one of those engines, don't buy it. But if it has a different engine, they can be a decent vehicle. Don't pay too much or use Hyundai. Korean car, the resale values are kind of low. So if you can get it cheap enough, it can be a decent car. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.